Welcome to the New Europe Studios, where you can watch us make the news. I'm speaking today with Gavin Wade from the Eastside Projects in Birmingham. Now, Birmingham City, the second largest city in Britain, is about to spend, raise and spend £2 million for a piece of large public art which will symbolise the city and the regeneration of the city about it. And Gavin's in charge is one of the guys in charge of the artistic side of finding a, an artist and artwork and working with the public to raise the funds and also to involve people in this project. So, Gavin, yeah. welcome to Brussels. Thank you, thanks for having me. And could you just tell me a little bit about how you see this project? Yeah, so the, the Birmingham Big Art Project, I think, is part of the, the aims of making the city better, improving Birmingham, making it think in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, finding something else that, that's missing and it's, it's really about being as ambitious as we could be. So we set a two million target to raise money with uh, an idea of what could be achieved but maybe it'll cost less, maybe it'll cost more. Depends on what the artist comes up with and depends how many people get on board with it and realise how important it can be for the city. Um, one of the things that, that Britain is, is quietly good at is public art. We've seen uh, many things, uh, you, you, you may even say that the Sir Abbas Giant was one of the first pieces of public art in Britain. Yes. But we've seen people like Anthony Gormley and others really uh, put Britain on, on the global map for this sort of work. I mean, have you seen anything that's been particularly useful to you when coming up with this project? Well, I, I've worked with a lot of artists who deal with context and they understand the idea that art doesn't exist on its own. Art is part of a system and it relates to the landscape, to people, to light, all these other things, all these other qualities. And I've been impacted by artists' belief in how they connect work into cities, into place, how they interweave it, how an artwork comes to being through those relationships. So perhaps an artist like uh, Nathan, Nathan Coley, who's based in Glasgow, mm -hmm. and he would make a work which might involve a conversation with the bishop of a town, with the chief of police, with someone who runs a call centre, and all of those conversations will add up to make an artwork that's very particular and specific to that place. And you learn from what artists do. You look at artists around the world and see how they're acting, how they want to make art now, and you learn from that and you respond to that. So that's part of my job as a curator, as someone who's leading an art organisation, to keep up with what artists are doing around the world and to, uh, and to also lead that to inspire and uh, d develop and experiment. So, but you learn from artists, you learn from the people who dedicate their lives to making art. I mean, y your project, the, the East Side project, is an artist-led project, which means that yeah. you're involving artists in shows and in galleries, and it's the artists who are, who are leading? Is yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm an artist curator, and mm -hmm. there are five other artists, uh, architect, uh, graphic designer, and we all work together. And, and it's partly based on the idea that why are the places that you experience art, and why are the places where art is exhibited not run by artists? If, if you think that art is part of the whole process, uh, the, every, every aspect of an artwork is important, then why don't you run the organisation? So Eastside Projects is an attempt to make a more sustainable, very organised and strategic situation in which to produce, develop art and inspire and bring talent through. So you've got emerging artists learning from older artists who are learning from the oldest artists in the world and the kind of um, leading people. So. I mean, one, one of the things also about this Birmingham Big Art Project is that you're trying to involve as many people as possible. You've got the councils, you've got the business yeah. community, and you're trying to involve the wider community. Is there, is there a real hunger for, for big kind of public art in, in Britain? Well, I think there's, there's, a, there's two sides to it. I think there is a, there's a belief that public art makes a difference and can allow a city to achieve something on an international platform, it, it offers it another image mm. and, it, and it looks like it works so in certain cities or the idea of Trafalgar Square and the fourth plinth there or the Anthony Gormley in Gateshead and how that may be known around the world to politicians, uh, urban planners, mm. people who are trying to affect culture directly 
believe in it, want it, know that it is effective in many ways. And then there, there is a flip side to people who feel that it is, it is very unknown and they don't really understand why it's there. And I think that, so there's, and, and so there's a bit of confusion and to try and say, why, why do we spend money on things like this? Why do we spend time on things like this? And I think that what I'd like to achieve with the Birmingham Big Art Projects is to answer those questions, is to look mm -hmm. at and, and get lots of different viewpoints on why public art is necessary, why, wh what the function of it is. And, but, but the function won't be things like making money or bringing visitors. That's their side effects, their positive side effects. But mm -hmm. the function of it is actually just about why you make art. And, so. and of course this is the ultimate idea of, of art as, a, as an experience, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. It's because the, the artwork will be, will generate responses in those who see it in person, which will be very different from say seeing a picture, you know, standing in front of say uh, the Angel of the North is very, very different to looking at a picture of it. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's a totally different thing. For the idea of people think uh, just, I don't know, a billboard of a painting or a photograph of a painting in a newspaper is the same as the painting and they're two very different things and that's, that's something to learn. But I suppose what, what I think is an important message is to get down to this idea that art should be, is part of people's lives and, and I'm interested in artists who make art part of their life, make it part of systems that already exist. They don't, they don't always try to make it a separate and the people's imagination of contemporary art is that it is in a separate box, it is in a white box, and you have to go to this hallowed place to see it. And that's just uh, one construct that's been made for how we think about art and think about the world. Mm -hmm. And really, I'm interested in Heather and Ivan Morrison, who started making work in Birmingham in an allotment, and then they bought a wood in Wales, and they're chopping down trees and then they're planting new trees mm -hmm. and they, they mill the trees, turn it into new structures and that became our office at Eastside Projects. So first of all it went to the Venice Biennale, then it came back to the gallery and then five years later that was adapted again and became our new public space. And all those aspects are intertwined with their life so they sometimes live in the woods, um, they might want to learn a new Japanese technique or a Russian technique mm -hmm. for, for making something and so they go and learn Russian, they learn to make Russian ice cream, then they make a Russian ice cream stand, and then they sell ice cream as their artwork. But they integrate it and they learn and they absorb processes, so they, they don't know where it's going to lead them, but they follow processes in order to make art, and it can be out of anything. That's where we are with art at the moment. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's also, I mean, it, it, it's possibly the most riskiest venture uh, I, I, I've seen uh, a politi political group come up with, or, or <laughs> a council, mm. because you look at it and you just think, how can you guarantee success? Yeah. You can't guarantee success in the same way as if they were building a, a stadium or a shopping centre yeah. or redeveloping it. it it's yeah. very risky, and, and you know, politicians are kind of risk adverse a lot of the time. Yeah, how are you finding uh, the links in Birmingham? because of this, and I ask because of a long tradition with arts and crafts that the city has. Yeah, that's what I, I think, you know, like w when you're making art in any place, you have to abide by rules and laws and desires of people who are there as well. But you, what you still want to do is, uh, what art should always be, is that it is the unexpected, is that it is risky. So anywhere in the world that is trying to make a public artwork happen is doing it on a policy of risk. And that is good, that is what art is. If you haven't got the risk actually, then you're not going to come up with an artwork, you're going to come up with an ornament. Yeah. So there are a number of cities who try making public art and they apply so many rules to it that it, you, what they get is a bit of ornamentation, a bit of prettiness. And that's not what art, what art is. So, but I like this idea, you said that Birmingham has got this history. Yes. And on Birmingham's coat of arms, we'd found recently that um, no one was really looking at this coat of arms, I never looked at it, and my colleague James Langdon, who was one of the other directors at the gallery, spotted it and said, there are two figures on the coat of arms, on one side there's an engineer, and on the other side there's an artist, and they are called the supporters of Birmingham. So there is actually a history that goes all the way to the top, to the heraldry and the hierarchy of the city, which is based on the fact that the city was built on the craftsmanship, the ingenuity and the creativity, and the combined aspects of industry and um, thinking mm. together about this sort of philosophy and making 
and it's built on that, but maybe it's forgotten it. So I'm trying to reinvigorate that idea to say, we are still your supporters. You, the Birmingham, you need to use your artists, you need to use us. And there's so. also that, 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 that dual side of human nature, you know, we, we need to work to live and we need to have a life that we're prepared to work to support. And so yeah. this is the two worlds coming together a little bit more of, or in the centre of it is, it's, the city. It, it, it's, I think it's the, real, it's the lifeblood of a city and it's the lifeblood of a country really. So it's very, um, it's very concerning when an education system starts to restrict creativity and restrict cultural knowledge. So they stop art being a central aspect of education. And what you're doing is restricting the potential of people for the future. Because I, I go into schools and I would say to them, you know, be an artist, but you, you, being an artist isn't what you do in your class. It isn't learning to paint. It isn't learning to do pottery. What it is, is it's learning to invent your own future, to invent what you do for the rest of your life. That's what art is. So, it, and, and kids don't realise that. I didn't realise that when I was younger. I had to wait until I was 18 before I realised that. And then suddenly I thought, oh my God, I, I can invent my, what happens in the future now. So Eastside Projects is, is part of that. It was a chance to try something new, to follow out all of the dreams of what an artist curator could be. Really. And also, I mean, what, what, you, what you're saying makes perfect sense. And it, it also brings in the fact that, 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 that art is often neglected or, 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 or put down the priority list because it is completely intangible. Yeah. The benefits that we get from having an artwork near us or in us or, 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 or seeing one, it's hard for, for someone like myself who's not a trained artist to, to describe, but it has a very real effect and I'm yeah. sure all of, the, all of the people watching this will, will be aware of works of art which, which have, have struck them, but in ways that it's very hard to put into words. Yeah, I th and again I think that goes back to basics. So imagine if, as you're learning French and geography and history and maths, all of those aspects, you were also having it intertwined that you're learning about art and you're understanding art in all those situations and that, that it's the invisible part of all those bits. So as you're learning maths, you're thinking about structure and pattern. You're thinking about an idea of how that could relate to mm. how you build cities, to how you make clothes, to how you design and think about philosophy, all these different aspects. So because that's not taught early on, it's not ingrained, but you could now be here and understand the invisible, accept the invisible, and accept that it's not a trick. It isn't that with art, it isn't that you're, there's something that you're meant to get, and because you don't get it, oh no, you're, you back off from it. There isn't something to get, it's actually to understand that there isn't anything to get. It's to, let, it's to accept what's there, to let yourself be part of it without the concern that there's something you don't understand. And that's that, and that there, but there is a little, there's a twist of mindset to get to that point. And it, there's also um, the fact that, that the art is, a, it, it, and looking at art is a way of meditating, mm -hmm. and a, a way of just just thinking randomly, abstractingly, seeing what your experience of looking at something triggers off, which will be different yeah. in all sorts of yeah. people. And there you get there you get to part of why it should happen in a city, yeah. because imagine a city where you never have a place where you can get lost in thought and never a place where you can look at something and not know what it is. And that would be a city that is lacking. And that is why art makes a difference, because it offers you that moment where you don't have to do anything else. You don't know what you're meant to do. It's meant to be somewhere where you imagine and you think up and make another link that wasn't already there. I mean, when, when we're looking at doing some of these projects or looking at the ideas of, of a public art, Number one, you're, you're, you're going back to a very old route of almost like public subscription, which mm. is how many of the statues and That's things true. that appear in all of our cities yeah. came from. So you're, you're bringing people in mm. that way and yeah. looking for sponsorship and all that. You're opening up so the literal ownership mm. yes. is spread wide. And also... We have found that, that there's a lot of initial criticism of public art. I'm thinking particularly, once again, of the Angel of the North. And I'm, I'm only raising this because 
the dish has become so well known that, that it's something I think people can can know about and respond. Is that initially there was a lot of complaints about the cost, mm. and then there was complaints about this ugly big steel mechanism. <laughs> And then over a period of a few weeks to a few months, people took it to their hearts. And that is something that could never be predicted. It can be hoped for. Yeah. I think that's, that, that's again, because the criticism was based on the wrong value judgments. It's based on ideas of economics. It's based on idea of consumerism. So you, you equate the idea that you consume, you go shopping, you spend money, you get something back for it. It's very tangible exchange. And so they, people then equate that system onto the idea of what public artwork is, or, or what art is, mm -hmm. and, you, and then you get this collision of I ideologies that art isn't a luxury good. Art mm -hmm. isn't a thing that you get for spending money on it, and there you go, bang, you know what it is, and you go home and you can wash your hair with it. It isn't, it isn't that. It is this other investment. It is, there's an element of sacrifice to it. So I, lo I really like that idea of subscription. Um, the artist that we're working with at the gallery at the moment, Bill Drummond, he would really like this idea of subscription, mm -hmm. that you know, if every person in Birmingham put in one pound to the Birmingham Big Art Project, then we'd have one million seventy-four thousand three hundred pound yeah. straight away, one pound from every person, and you and each person would have bought into the idea of taking a risk. I mean, the interesting <laughs> thing is that, that that you do mention Bill Drummond, who's doing uh, a very big project. At yours and part of, and, and the world tour, which yes, the I, I start believe of his you're world doing. Tour, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, if you if you're not aware with him, uh, Bill Drummond started off in Liverpool, where mm -hmm. he was managing bands like Echo and the Bunnymen, yeah. and was the crazy eccentric genius behind <laughs> Zoo Records and a lot of the the famous pop, uh, post punk sound. Yeah, yeah. And then he became part of the the KLF. Yeah. Uh, and took the art and musical world by, by absolute storm and a man is, 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 is a very unique visionary yeah, in many ways. He takes things on his own terms, he tries to set things up with his own systems, his own rules and so it makes him look very different, makes him stand out, makes but him it, seem confrontational. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is I've never found him confrontational, I've found him like a big open hearted kind of a guy yeah. who's perhaps running a little bit faster than the rest of us are. Yeah, I think at the core of it is a, is a generosity. And what's interesting is him as someone who's seen around the world and who makes public art all around the world, is that at the core of it is a sense of, of work. You know, he was brought up with a work ethic. Yeah. And for him, making art is, is the con continuation of that work ethic. He sets himself jobs, he sees what things that he needs to achieve, and then he goes and does them. And he does them in a very efficient way. It's just that he sets his own jobs to do. He doesn't yeah. work for anyone else. He works for himself. That's part of what I think is interesting, that someone who, you know, Bill is a member of the public, and his job as a member of the public has been to set his own ways that he lives his life and to try and make art. And that may have been through managing a band and, yeah. and working out a pattern that they go on a bike tour around <laughs> a city or where they do their tour across the country. And there's actually a sort of hidden invisible magic to it and that's 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 a sense you know so the idea of magic as being some kind of consciousness changing event but i, th so. I think now that you said <laughs> that it is, is that this is this is what perhaps the public art project you're looking for is about is that that spark of magic mm. yeah that cannot be described in words or in music or any other way that indefinable something how on earth are you going to achieve this? Because if I was tasked mm -hmm. with finding a, 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 an artwork to represent a city or to be placed in a city, I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, it's, I think when, when you've spent a long time working with artists and in the art world, you, you begin to realize that it is, it's all about putting trust in those individuals. So you can make judgments based on what artists have already achieved and what they say they want to achieve, and what they, what they tend to reference, what sort of histories they, they look at, and how they convert that into this, mag into this magic. You, know, you, you can see what, what they've done before. So I feel very confident in finding artists around the world, and also inviting other experts, other curators mm -hmm. and directors of organizations to come in and be part of a selection group. So it, wouldn't, it won't be me selecting, I'll be part of a group. 
of people from around the UK who will be looking at uh, putting forward artists from all, from all around the world as well as artists in the Midlands and trying to locate it. But ultimately it comes down to my confidence in believing in an, in an individual in, or in a group of artists who will produce this work because that's, that's what they do, that's the, what they're experienced at. So although there is a truth to the saying that anyone can be an artist, the members of public who have dedicated their lives to making art yeah. are the ones that you trust in the end because they've already made that leap. Mm. They've, they haven't been, they haven't had it hidden deep in them and waiting for it to come out. They've let it out and they've been following their intuition and developing their intuition. So intuition becomes this experienced, knowledgeable approach to dealing with context, dealing with, 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 with reality mm. and turning it into this magic that we're talking mm. about. I, I, Reminds me of the, the old line about someone seeing an abstract expressionist painting saying, I could have done that, and yeah. someone turned around, but you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I think but the, you know. the, there's a power in the fact that it should be, you didn't, but it is true that you could. And there is a power in that. It isn't, art isn't the thing that no one else can do. In a way, the strongest work is, it is what other people can do. It is, it is about sharing and understanding. I mean, this is, this is one of the things I, I got from you from the very first moment I, I inquired about the, the big art project is that you're saying that you're an artist, you're a project director and you're a member of the public. Yeah. There is there's a humility in the approach that I've seen in this project. Hmm. And frankly, it's one that I've seen in many other artists. Right. You know, yeah. the, the image of an artist of being a, a, a person who's full of his own worth and genius <laughs> doesn't really fit in with with what I've seen and it doesn't fit in with the ideas of this project. Yeah, I mean there is, the, I mean there has to be an element of an ego about the individuals of who, course. but that's more to do with the determination to follow something through and if you don't have an ego to an extent then it's hard to persuade other people to always do the things because no, that hasn't been done before so why should, should we do it? But I, but I you know, really I moved back to Birmingham because I wanted to be part of making the city better and I want to link with other people being there and I believe that the more creative people who live and stay in Birmingham move to Birmingham, the more galleries, the more public art projects, you know I'd like there to be a thousand public artworks in Birmingham, that then you will have something that's thriving, then you will have magic happening on every corner and, you'll, and it will, you'll get a different level of consciousness of thinking about yourself, criticising yourself. The city has to learn to be critical and to then act on that criticism and to improve itself over and over again. It's not a one job deal, you do one thing, you get better and then you've got to get better than that over and over again and that's what art is, that's what being a city is. So in, in, in a way, that, you know, the big art project will never stop. I hope it won't stop, no, it should be a catalyst yeah. for future things. Yeah. And I'd like once again just to welcome you, welcome you to Brussels and Brussels is a city that, that I think is, is one of the most creative in the whole of Europe. Mm. Uh, you will see so many little statues, so many quirky little paintings, murals, and street art here, there's some incredible things. Mm. And I think Birmingham has had a reputation of being a rather grim, industrial, depressing place. But the city is changing, and it's yeah. changing beyond recognition. Yeah. And you're saying is that any city anywhere in the world needs public art to make it a better place. Yeah, and it needs, uh, that can just be an understanding, because even that idea of the grimness, you see, for me, growing up in Birmingham in the 1970s, what I think is the most beautiful thing in the world the mo is nature. My nature is concrete, and is concrete architecture made well. And so Birmingham had some that was made well and some that wasn't made very well. But for me, so as Birmingham loses all of its concrete, it's losing something that I thought made it special. And so I think it needs new concrete. It, need, you know, it needs a new idea of how to layer the city, how to build layers and layers, develop the history, and make new things happen at the same time, intertwine them thoughtfully, not just randomly and just let these things just happen all over the place. You know, you want a little bit of random there, very thoughtful there, put it all together, make things, make things happen, I suppose. And, and it makes a city like a city of people. We're all different, we all do for different things, we all come from different backgrounds, do things different ways, and, and, and art in 
this city of 10,000 artworks that you're, you're <laughs> imagining and, yeah. and are hoping for would obviously uh, reflect that. I think it would, it would, well, it would be a new city, but then that's what we want. Why not? It will just be a, a new city that builds on the strengths of the old. So, yeah. so I hope we've uh, explained a little bit about the nature of public art in Birmingham. It's uh, <laughs> something that I think that there's lessons for, for all of Europe. Uh, here in a way that symbols do send messages. They send messages to people who live in a city and people who visit. And let's hope that we have more art and more magic in our cities. Thank <laughs> you very much. Thanks very much, Andy. Right.